Hey guys, it's Dolores. Welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can tell, today's video is a little bit different. I wanted to do a vlog. Y'all, I told y'all I was going to be doing this little weight loss thing. Like what, two weeks ago, that's what I said. And I'm finally like really getting my life together and getting dedicated to it. So today has been so crazy for me. Um, I'm literally, I have, haven't even eaten breakfast today because I've just been working non-stop and I had a project that I was trying to finish so I wanted to show you guys what I'm making for lunch it's a really easy like low carb steak stir fry um and I'm really just making it up as I go and I'm using what I have so you can definitely make it differently if you want to but y'all we about to use what's in this refrigerator okay because I'm not going back out to the grocery store anytime soon. Um, so I'm just going to be showing you guys how to make this. And then I'm also going to show you guys how I track this on the Lose It app. So the steak that I'm using is just like a stir fry steak that I got from Jewel. And if you don't want to use this, you can definitely use chicken. Um, you can use shrimp. I mean, you can really use whatever you want to. But I wanted to try out steak because um, I'm not a big beef eater. But sometimes I do feel like it's a little bit more filling than getting like chicken or something like that. So um, I don't like these big booty strips of steak. So I'm just going to cut these in half. And you can do cube beef, which I'm using in a different recipe later this week. Um, or like I said, you can use even frozen chicken. I've made this recipe before with the frozen chicken cubes, the organic ones from Target. So it's completely up to you what you use, but I personally love using steak for this. So now that I have my steak cut up, I'm just gonna go ahead and season it. And y'all, I love to cook. I cook all the time, I just don't record it. Um, but you will definitely learn that I use the same seasonings all the time. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of like push the pieces around so I can get them as seasoned as possible. I really try not to touch stuff with my raw hands, with my raw hands. I try not to touch raw stuff with my hands, y'all, Lord. <laughs> but I mean, if you had to get in there, then get in there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil on top of it just to help the seasoning stick. And I'm gonna start off with a little garlic powder, um, which is like a go-to for literally everything that I make. I absolutely have to have garlic powder. Um, I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of paprika. If you want it a little bit more spicy, you can definitely add cayenne pepper. Um, more garlic powder, I guess. Uh, no, okay, I'm going on to the pepper y'all now, y'all. I can't even remember what I was doing with this darn voiceover. Anyway, <laughs> now I'm going in with the black pepper. I really love black pepper, like on every single thing. Like, honestly, I need it. Fresh black pepper. Um, now I'm using my onion powder. If you have like regular onions, like real onions that you want to add into this, then you don't have to use onion powder and a little bit of seasoned salt. Um, definitely not the Lowry's brand, it's the Aldi's brand, but y'all, it still hit. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that um, slapped around in the seasonings. If you wanted to marinate this the day before or marinate it for like an hour while you do something else, you totally could. But I was in a rush that day, so I just went ahead and marinated it for like two minutes and put it directly in the skillet. So now I have my steak in a non-stick skillet um, and I definitely recommend using non-stick or cast iron, a good cast iron skillet that's seasoned if you have it because I want the steak to get crispy but I don't want it to stick to the skillet and then now I have to like sit here struggling to move it around. Um, now some of the pieces are still stuck together and that's completely my fault because my cutting skills were like so ratchet instead of using a cutting board I'm trying to wash the least amount of dishes as possible so I just have this sitting in the skillet and I'm gonna let it stir fry for probably like five to six minutes and if you like your steak to not be like well done then you can definitely do it for less time than that but I like my stuff cooked all the way even if that means I gotta chew a little bit extra y'all <laughs> so don't hate me on that So this is the rice cauliflower that I was showing you guys in my last video and it's only about 20 calories for one cup um, and then Tommy actually bought some broccoli florets oh my god and like what's going on <laughs> Tommy bought some broccoli florets that he was using to make his own lunch so I'm gonna steal some of his stuff um, not that many because um, I'm still trying to keep this low calorie and I thought at the time that I was going to be eating some nice little gumbo uh, at the end of the day but that didn't happen <laughs> so I ended up being hungry again but 
I used about three quarters of a cup of the broccoli and now I did let this sit out on my counter for like maybe 20 minutes while I was preparing everything else because I don't want to sit here and wait for this stuff to like defrost. Now my cauliflower was still kind of frozen but I'm adding about a cup and a half of the cauliflower because again that's only 20, 20 calories total per cup and honestly when you guys cook this stuff down it's not that much. Um, so and like I found that the cauliflower tends to clump up a little bit so sometimes you just have to go in there with your hand and like break the pieces up manually but I definitely recommend the cauliflower if you're looking for a rice substitute. It really doesn't have a flavor it kind of takes on whatever flavor you give it but between the um, cauliflower and the broccoli it's almost like making us like a beef and broccoli stir fry if you want to say. So now that I am done setting aside my cauliflower and my broccoli, um, my steak is almost done. I just wanted to get um, some color on it, like I said. I, I really like my stuff to be almost burnt, but like I said, I was rushing this day. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could just stop right here. If you wanted to add some onions and saute some onions, you could do that. Me personally, I really, really love fresh garlic. So. Um, I'm not using fresh garlic. I'm using like the jarred garlic that's already cut up. But if you have like a garlic press, you can use that as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic, probably about two teaspoons and a little bit of the garlic juice to my steak while I saute it. That way I can just kind of cook it down a little bit. Um, it's already soft, so you don't have to worry about that. But I really feel like I'm um, adding this garlic as another level of flavor to the steak. So now that my steak is cooked, I'm just going to add a little bit of sesame oil to a pan. And you want to make sure that it says pure sesame oil. And trust me, y'all, if you're looking for like authentic, like Asian taste, this is basically the oil that they make a lot of their dishes in. So I'm just going to add the sesame oil and saute my um, cauliflower until it's cooked completely. Now, just doing that alone, whether you add any seasonings or not, which you should, <laughs> is really going to give it like that Asian flavor if that's what you're looking for. And so after my cauliflower was cooked all the way through, which only took a couple minutes, I went ahead and added in my broccoli. And now all I'm adding to that is some teriyaki sauce and a little bit of oyster sauce. Now, if you don't want to use either one of those things, that's completely up to you. If you just want to use soy sauce, you can do that as well. But I like the semi-sweetness that teriyaki sauce has. And oyster sauce also has like a, a really good savoriness to it. As you'll see, I use these um, sauces a lot. So it's completely up to you what you want to season it with. But I say season it as if you were making like fried rice or whatever your favorite Asian dish is. Like basically y'all make this taste good because I already wish that I was using rice instead of using cauliflower and all that other stuff. So I'm going to make this taste as flavorful as possible for me since I've decided that I want to go down this low carb route. I ain't going to be eating no nasty food. Okay. Seasoning still work on low carb. So after I finished cooking the vegetables, I just wanted to fry an egg to put on top. And this is completely optional whether or not you want to do that. Um, I'm using low sodium salt by Salt Sense, which is really good, um, especially if you have like hypertension or something like that. And I'm using a little bit of black pepper. Now, I am going to cook the egg all the way through because I don't like runny eggs, but you can cook it however you like. So you guys, here's the end result. Um, I've already plated my cauliflower and my broccoli mix on the bottom of the plate. I stacked my steak on top of that. And now I'm just going to put my fried egg off to the side. All these other accoutrements, if that's the right word, are completely optional. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of sesame seed on top because I really like um, not only the taste, but I like the texture of them. <coughs> now, if you can't eat sesame seeds or if you don't want to put them, that's completely fine. Like I said, it's optional. This is just like how I, how I like to make my dishes. Um, I'm also going to add some green onion on top. I love like the bite into a green onion, especially against like the savoriness 
of the rest of the dish so i always add this to basically like any asian dish that i'm making because i really like the way that it tastes um now another thing i love to do is squeeze lime on top of my food i mean i, I like squeezing lime on top of anything really but definitely of course asian dishes um, i have so many recipes for asian stuff y'all pad thai like i love thai food so limes are like a big deal for me now let me give y'all an up close shot oh my god tell me that doesn't look good even though it's low carb like, it doesn't even look low carb whatever low carb actually looks like <laughs> And the last thing I always have to have is a little bit of pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. I love that heat on top of my food. So also this is optional. That's why I said if you're not interested in like a pepper that's going to really hit you in the back of your throat when you bite into it, you can use a little bit of cayenne pepper instead. But that's it. We're done. I mean, this whole thing probably took me 15 or 20 minutes, a little bit longer because I was filming. But other than that, that looks amazing and it tasted amazing too y'all and i want to say it was only maybe 300 calories but oh my god look at that so y'all after i found out my mom wasn't cooking the gumbo anymore i came downstairs and i saw these cookies on the table and <laughs> i had to have one listen like i always say low carb don't mean no carb so if you see a cookie or those chips you want treat yourself honey okay so I really had a lot of work to do that day and I did not get a chance to eat early. It was like 10 o'clock when I was about to eat. So I just decided to make a really simple salad, um, a little bit of butter lettuce, some chopped up English cucumber. I put a few grape tomatoes, um, about two good tablespoons of shredded mozzarella. I also had some lunch meat that I had bought for lunch, but I didn't eat it on a sandwich. So I rolled up some ham off the bone, some maple turkey and salami and put that on top as well. And I love using the no salt seasoning that that I just showed you guys and I'm just gonna also add a little bit of creamy poppy seed dressing on top so if you have to eat late or things came up then I would just recommend eating a salad that way you don't go overboard I'm also trying to cut back on drinking popper juice so I just was gonna drink some almond milk and put a little bit of the strawberry nest quick mix but y'all it should be a crime to put stuff at the top of the cabinet when you know everybody else in the house is short Tommy is 6'4 and I'm like 5'2 so why are we putting why do we even have a cabinet that's that high up i just will never understand that <laughs> now i just want to quickly show you guys how i use the lose it app i know a lot of people have said they haven't seen it before but it's basically a calorie counting app um it shows you all the macronutrients you are eating especially if you're doing keto um it gives you different tips different like recipes that you can use now this is the screen where you basically track everything if it's exercise food snacks you can look at your weight loss goals, um, how much you started off weighing, how much you're trying to lose per week. Like you can take like your measurements and everything like that or set goals on how much water that you want to drink per day or how much body fat you want to lose. Like I said, your measurements for like your arms or whatever. All of that is housed in this screen. Now, my goals um, is based on my age, my height, my weight, how active I am. Um, you can also do it where they recommend the calories to you, which they would recommend 2000. That's too many. I don't even eat that much. Or you can do a fixed calorie where you kind of decide for yourself how much you want to eat. Um, it also tells you your activities. Um, again, like if you want to change any goals, you can do that. And so I think this app is really great to use if you're keto, if you want a calorie count, or if you just want to keep track of how much food you're, you're eating and you know what the um, nutrition facts are on the food. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of track what I ate today. Um, the, the listing of food is so extensive, you guys. They keep your meals. They have restaurant meals in there. So it's not really hard to go in this app and figure out you know, how many calories your food is. Now, like I said, my cauliflower was only like 20 calories for like one cup. So I'm going to try to find something that's as close to that, even if they don't necessarily list the brand directly. And that most of the times I don't look up the brands anyway. So I'm going to add my broccoli, which was not that many calories. Um, I know how many calories it told me on the bag. So again, I just try to find something that's as close to that as possible. Um, and now some stuff like the steak, since there's so many different cuts of steak, so many different types of steak, it can be kind of hard to find something similar to what you ate. So I just try to be specific as possible. I put in steak and that wasn't really giving me the results I wanted. So I'm going to try searching it again. 
and clearly I can't type today. <laughs> so they were kind of like uh, beef or steak strips. So I'm going to try to find something as similar to that as possible to track. And I know how many um, ounces the package was, which it wasn't a lot. It was like $2. So that wasn't a lot of steak. And I think they're the most, you know, closest to fajita steak strips. So I'm going to use that. Now, when it comes to tracking everything else, um, like, honestly, some days I just be like, oh, I don't want to track this because I don't want to go over. But if you go over, just personal accountability. Um, I probably didn't have to have that fried egg, but I really wanted it. <laughs> so one fried egg um, is only 90 calories, which is not a lot. If I would have cooked it a different way, like not in butter or, you know. There's no other way to cook it, really, so I'm going to just take that L. <laughs> now, usually I don't track my sauces, but I want to track the teriyaki sauce since I know that it has a lot of calories. Um, and I don't want to get in the habit of not tracking stuff, but eventually that's what I end up doing anyway. Um, now, I did have a tea earlier that day. I had a pure leaf tea. And, y'all, if I would have, like, really just cared that it was 250 calories, I would have never even drank that. I promise you. I did not want to spend that many calories on just a drink. So now I'm going to show you how I track my salad. A really good thing to do is to try, um, like search what one little food item is you're looking for and then go to the meals tab. This basically shows you everything, every meal that you've eaten before that includes that ingredient. So I found the meal that's the closest to what I had on my salad today. Um, I didn't have Roma tomatoes, so I deleted those out to search for grape tomatoes. And again, my type, I don't know why I couldn't type that day. I really don't understand. <laughs> So you're going to put in how many tomatoes you had. And um, I have four tomatoes that I cut up. Now, um, I'm also going to delete out anything else that I didn't have. I didn't use iceberg lettuce. I used butter lettuce instead. Um, and me personally, I don't have to have lettuce on my salads. But I just added it, you know, just to be a little health conscious. Um, I didn't have any bacon bits. Um, the cucumber, I had more than a medium cucumber. Like, I basically had, like, a cucumber and a half. So you can adjust that. Um, I didn't have any boiled eggs on my sandwich. All of the lunch meat is correct, but I'm going to increase the amount of ounces that I had. Then I didn't have any pork sausage. Um, everything looks correct now. I did have the almond milk, so I'm just going to increase the amount from one cup to two because I, I had a 16-ounce cup of that. Now, y'all know the biggest deal is the salad dressing. I could have used any other salad dressing that was lower calories, but I didn't want to. And again, like I said, I'm not eating anything that I don't want just because I'm trying to lose weight. My creamy poppy seed dressing was 160 calories for two tablespoons. That is crazy to me, but it is what it is. Now, I'm going to add in my shredded mozzarella, which wasn't a lot. And eventually, the more that you calorie track, the the easier it is to just remember how much this stuff is in calories before you even track it. Now, I do regret eating that oatmeal cookie. I could have passed on that, but I was hungry at the time. Um, so I, I shouldn't have ate two. I should have just had the one and called it a day. Now I had a payday bar for breakfast, y'all, which is horrible because I got so busy, but that payday bar was a bad mistake. It put me over my calories, but um, I'm the one that set the calories at 1500 because I know that I don't get enough movement in because I sit down all day at my desk. Now, if I did exercise, this is how I would track it in the app, but because I don't, I eat less calories because I know that I burn less calories. Now, after I have everything in the app tracked, I'm going to go ahead and click I'm done logging at the bottom of the screen. This basically just tells Lusa that you're done eating for the day. Now, I recommend doing this because you get streaks every day that you log in and those streaks give you badges. And y'all, you need that encouragement to be consistent with doing this. Okay, you guys, so it is the end of the day. Um, today wasn't too bad. It was just an extremely busy day for me today. I had a lot of work to do. Um, I had quite a few meetings. Plus, I needed to take a nap because I didn't go to bed until like 4.30 a.m. yesterday trying to stay up and finish a project. So even though I didn't eat breakfast, um, I still made a good lunch. I'm eating dinner late. It's like maybe 10.30, but that's why I chose to eat a salad because I know that's pretty light. Uh, excuse the fan in the background because it's hot as heck in Chicago right now. But anyway, um, tomorrow hopefully is going to be a lot better. I'm definitely not about to stay down here and meal prep anything. <laughs> like I'm not going to do that at all. Um, I already showed you guys how many calories I ate for the day um, because of the fact that I already had, you know, a lot of stuff and I'm trying to stay under my budget. I'm just going to drink some almond milk for dinner, even though I really don't want that. I want some seven up, but it's baby steps, you guys. I would definitely say that if it's stuff that is just causing you to not be happy or 
just not look forward to trying to lose weight, then don't do it. I mean, I know that I'm not going to be happy if I cut out pop or if I cut out in juice and stuff like that. And I'm not willing to be suffering for no reason for the sake of losing weight. So I would rather just cut back on them, um, drink lower calorie drinks, uh, drink more water, which I already drink about, you know, probably about 80 ounces of water a day anyway. Um, my thing is just portion control and not going overboard with stuff. So... I'm gonna drink my little almond milk, eat my salad, and I'm gonna stay out for a while because I have a little bit more work to finish. Plus, I'm trying not to go to bed um, on a full stomach. So tomorrow, I'm really gonna aim for making breakfast, making lunch, and making dinner. Today, I thought we were having gumbo for dinner, which is why I did such a light lunch. But y'all, everybody was knocked out, so we didn't cook anything for dinner at all. But um, tomorrow, I hope it is a better day. For a fact, when I went to the store, you guys saw that I didn't buy anything unhealthy. I didn't buy any snacks or any chips, so I have no choice but to eat better. So we will see. <sighs> Hopefully, I can get it together, y'all, before the end of the week. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. Um, I really do cook a lot. Like, honestly, I used to have my own catering company, and I love to cook. But I'm trying to, again, do more low-carb stuff. So if you're interested in seeing um, low-carb recipes or recipes that may be keto in a way, then please let me know in the comments. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next video.